1965, Gordon Moore made a, a rather remarkable set of predictions. And this quote up here is, uh, it's a technology prediction like I've never seen. In 1965, especially if you go back in the room now, it's almost inconceivable that somebody could be so right about the way that the future looked. And the reason that he was right is he took a trend and, and, and extrapolated it into the future. So this trend was, was uh, came to be known as Moore's Law, although he, apparently he never referred to it as such. So from the early 1965 computers, which were kind of similar to what I showed you, maybe a little bit better at the beginning, he thought that people would have computers in their homes. These things would be built into things like cell phones and iPods. He didn't use those words, but that's kind of the I mean, that's just a remarkable prediction. Now, I'm not going to be able to do anything like that. Uh, I don't have the uh, powers of foresight that he has displayed. What I can do is show some data. So this is a uh, slide which shows four generations of our quantum computing chips over the past two years or so. Uh, some of the two years doesn't have anything in it because we try things in the new uh, The ending and the thing that we're now using to run this demo and some predictions in the future. And this is an exponential scale. So, uh, you know, these things are not one-to-one -one comparable, but it's generally understood that in certain cases, exponential trends become self-fulfilling prophecies. And in our case, we have set our objective to meet a doubling of the number of qubits we can put on this chip every fixed period of time. So if this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, this will become a Moore's Law-ish thing when the number of cubes doubles every fixed period of time. Now, uh, I'm going to just conclude by quoting or uh, showing you a quote from the we, go, we Choose to Go to the Moon speech by JFK. When I was researching and preparing for this, I was looking for things that were uh, inspirational in a sense because this is a big journey that you know, not only us, but a lot of people in this room are, are on and will contribute to in the future. And it's something that you can't take lightly because of the implications of success and failure. Now, JFK, when he was talking about going to the moon, I read the speech and, you know, it always brought tears to my eyes. It was so hopeful and uh, sort of to stand on the verge of great things that I thought that I should um, quote from it. Uh, a, a good American book, one of that better stuff. And uh, I, I, felt, I felt touched by this, uh, particularly because it points out a very important thing that everybody in this room has to keep in mind, is that no matter how much we learn about something, no matter how much we peel back these veils and we're impressed by what we've done, all it does really is reveal our ignorance about the future. And uh, uh, you know, it's, it's with great pride that I and the team are showing you what we've done, but it's also with a sense of the humbleness in the face of the problems that we'll have to overcome to make this thing a reality in the future. Thanks very much.